Let's go. Do you know how many outbreaks I've been part of? How many I've covered? If you can't take yourself out of the picture, then you should get the hell out of here! It's been over a year since the colossal flopster piece known as Dead Rising 4 graced the gaming world with its putrid presence. Exactly one year, pretty much on the nose, Capcom releases a ton of updates to Dead Rising 4 as well as a bunch of new content. All of this coincides with the launch of the PlayStation 4 version, which was known about for a long time since Capcom said from the very beginning that the game would reach PlayStation 4 a year after the Xbox One launch. It was vague wording, but what else did you expect from this? A Switch version? This will be my final video on Dead Rising 4. I almost can't believe I'm diving into this game one more time, but I'm really excited to finally put this tired, ragged game to rest. So anyway, let's take a look at Dead Rising 4 Frank's big package? Yeah, you can really tell they wanted to back away from the sexual overtones and make a more mature game. What a ridiculous name. And notice they add a lens flare to big on the title. Might as well call it Frank's throbbing 13-inch cock, actually. Anyway, I refuse to call it that. Japan simply named it Dead Rising 4 Special Edition. How about we just refer to it as that? It is common practice for Capcom to re-release particular games with improvements and new content, but rarely do they dish this out for free. Just about all cases, you have to shell out some cash for them. Still, as of recent, they seem to be keen on taking the approach of appeasing current fans that are unhappy or just make happy fans happier by releasing updates like this for free. With this on top of Street Fighter V Arcade Edition and Resident Evil 7's Not A Hero free DLC chapter, it's possible that Capcom is trying to gauge how well free DLC does in regards to new sales for older games. It's a practice I definitely welcome. So what's different about Dead Rising 4 Special Edition? Well, for one, it includes all the downloadable content released earlier this year for the PlayStation 4 version. I already covered the DLC packages known as Frank Rising and Super Ultra Dead Rising 4 Mini Golf, so if you didn't see, take a look back if you're curious on my thoughts about them. We also have a good handful of changes to the main campaign as well. The developers themselves call this fan-requested improvements. It's also worth noting that a good chunk of the staff that worked on Dead Rising 4 have already left the company, a while before this was even announced, most significant being Joel Nichols, the game's director. Yes, practically at the peak of this game's infamy, he slinked away like a slug back to EA. As I've been making this series, I've been steadily compiling a list of my complaints about the game to see how many they managed to address between December 2016 and December 2017, but we'll check back on this later. So, Capcom already gives us a magnificent start by delaying the update for owners of the Windows 10 version. Not only that, but they failed to even inform anyone of this until the goddamn day it was supposed to launch. Just to further emphasize how stupid this is, the Steam version, which came out three months after the initial launch of the game, received this update the same time as Xbox One, but not Windows 10. Part of me wants to say this is also a screw up on Microsoft's end, but I don't really know. I actually doubt it considering how long it's taken. As of today, the update is still not out. Regardless, Dead Rising 4 was the first time I trusted Windows 10 in regards of a gaming experience, but I suppose it'll remain as the last. So, seeing as how the new content is free for all players, fuck the Windows 10 version. I'm just gonna borrow an Xbox One copy so I can at least experience the new stuff. Here we go! Now to dive into Capcom Heroes mode. I figured this would just be new costumes with its own unique abilities, but it's actually treated as a completely separate campaign. It even changes some of the cutscenes. There's a variety of 17 playable costumes with their own abilities, all deriving from classic Capcom titles. This entire campaign's mechanics are nearly identical to Frank Rising. It even has the same Zombie Frank as an unlockable costume. The only items you can use in the world are health ups and vehicles. Your abilities are used through the attack buttons as well as left bumper and right trigger, which both have cooldowns so you can't spam them. Also, you get a special attack ability when you build your combo meter. Arcade machines are scattered about, giving you the option to change costumes, but they only last 5 minutes without visiting one of these machines. There's also posters strewn about of other Capcom games. Not sure what the point of that is, they're even marked on your map as if they're collectible or something. You start out with classic Frank, and I do like the leather jacket. Not so much the aviators. His attacks are akin to how he fought in the Marvel vs. Capcom games. <laughs> You killed him? What? No, nah, no, nah, he's just sleeping. Oh look, they brought back Queens. Well, only for classic Frank. Although now it seems to work on everyone. All of the characters must be unlocked through finding stars scattered across the map or completing certain objectives as well as progressing through the story. Jesus, I know Adam was fat, but that face is a little too much. I do appreciate that they tried to recreate his original animations though. 
<laughs> yeah, Clash of the Classics. Adam versus Sean. Well, not really Sean, but you know. Mech Zangief is probably my favorite costume. The body slams are really satisfying, but don't even bother if there's a ceiling above you. Some of the cutscenes are even changed, notably any that involved an exosuit since you don't even use those in Capcom Heroes mode. To my surprise, they didn't just recycle stuff from the Dead Rising 3 Arcade Remix DLC, but they did recycle within Dead Rising 4 itself. Some of these characters just don't feel too different from each other. Notably base when compared to Mega Man, and his buzzsaw throw is just Dante's sword throw. Some of these abilities feel lazy. Ryu having a Hadouken, sure, but why does he also have this weird lob Hadouken? Why does Zangief have a fireball? I guess that's more for the sake of enemies that are in unreachable areas throughout the campaign, but these areas always have machines that allow you to switch costumes, so it's not like you'd be completely stuck. Sissel's washing machine slam, while funny, is just a reskin of Zangief's body slam. The campaign itself is a chore to get through, considering how the level up system works. Every time you level up, you either gain 25 more hit points or 10% more running stamina. Speaking of which, I guess they couldn't fit a stamina meter on the bottom left, so you never really know when you're going to run out. And that's about it. All you do is play through the original campaign, but you're limited to only using these costumes to defend yourself. A huge problem considering particular encounters. It's more tedious than ever taking out some of these bosses. You also never run into the new survivor missions, which we'll discuss more later. I have a lot of issues with Capcom Heroes mode. If you didn't think Dead Rising 4 was already tedious, this really shines a spotlight on that problem. Despite that you have a decent sized roster, chances are you're going to rely on one or two particular costumes for the majority of the campaign since they are the most effective. Despite how little there was to the original main campaign, this limits the player even more. There's no way to purchase any sort of perks, and they couldn't even bother to add different incentives to leveling up, like reducing cooldowns for certain attacks. In all honesty, this mode is not very good. It can be fun for a few minutes, especially if he's dressing as a particular character you like. It's a bit amusing seeing him do some of these moves and even shouting certain phrases. But that dissipates very quickly, and all you're really doing is clearing waves. And you most likely narrowed your costume choices down to two or three about halfway through the campaign because you realize how broken and overpowered they are. Something that would have helped the lack of variety was adding costumes that utilize the exosuit. That would have been more fun considering they gave us a taste with the original game by letting you don the Zero add-on when you're in the safe room after a completed file. Instead, the exosuit is completely absent. Can you imagine if we got exo costumes like Nemesis or even Anacharis? Fucking guts, man! That would have been awesome! Capcom Heroes was likely conceptualized through the remaining developers realizing that they should have made something similar to Super Ultra Dead Rising 3 Arcade Remix Hyper Edition EX Plus Alpha. Fan service at its most transparent, for those that may not be aware, that was the multiplayer expansion in which up to four people played through one of the four campaigns in competitive co-op action. It's very similar to how Dead Rising 4's multiplayer is designed, but without all the fun stuff. So I just have to ask, how on earth did they not think of implementing the Capcom Heroes costumes into multiplayer? That probably would have been more fun, be similar to 3's arcade remix DLC, and have people come back to try multiplayer again. Nope, instead you only get to blow up all these baddies with Joe's pink bombs and Jill's fire grenades. Alone. Forever. Anyway, that isn't the only new content. The main campaign also has a number of changes, but killing two birds with one stone? We'll see what those changes are as we go over my list of complaints. Let's begin. Boring hub world with cut corners. Nope, nothing changed. One thing I would have liked to see for this update is the stores that are shuttered are open this time or replaced with different stores. Oh well. Here we got a couple. No survivors or narratives or stories. And no in-game timer or unique side missions. Alright, here's something new. They did add unique survivor missions that actually require you to do more than just clear the area around them. Here's a few examples. You have to put out a fire to save her. Okay. This person wants you to go out and take a few pictures. Sure. Another one wants you to find something missing, which leads to an ambush. Alright, alright. Overall, the new missions themselves aren't too great, but if something like this was in the initial launch, I would have liked the game a bit more. I didn't expect these to be very unique, considering the amount of time CV had to develop these missions, so this is... fine, I guess. At least it's a bit of variety. My biggest issue, however, is the AI itself. This shows how poorly they are programmed for this game. Instead of you escorting them to a safe area, you actually just have to follow them as they attempt to walk a predetermined path. Despite that this is under the same engine as Dead Rising 3, a game that did have escort missions, the original devs seem to have mutated it so much that nobody can figure out how to get something like NPCs to follow you, since it was never something that came up for the original campaign. They also tend to glitch out. What the fuck? Each mission also grants you a new costume, but they're just alternate colors to pre-existing ones. 
still, overall, this is okay. And like I said before, if you're going to get rid of the timer, you have to at least add unique side missions or something that's going to really take up people's time throughout the game so they don't have to worry about it. This is an attempt at that, so I'll give them the credit. No unique humanistic boss fights. Here we see another big change. Originally these bosses were nothing more but clones of Frank that wielded combo weapons exactly the same way you would. This time around, most of the bosses have their own animations, and killing some of them grants you a unique weapon exclusively from that fight. It's also worth noting a lot of these are not from the original version. They also have a lot more health, so tanking through them is not as easy. I'm surprised. I can't just get in their face and mash X anymore. It's actually making me think. With my brain. Think about things like spacing. I am shocked. These bosses, while still not very memorable, are definitely a step up from the original version. By extension, they also gave back the cultist minions the suicide bomb attack from Dead Rising 1. That's actually pretty great. No pocket sand, but I didn't expect that anyway. They also added boss themes, but they're just recycled from Dead Rising 2 and 3. Either way, this is definitely worth crossing off the list. Bad combo weapons. Well, it's not like they added any more combo weapons. Runs like garbage. Despite the update still not being live on Windows 10, I did play it a bit just to see if the game runs better. And it does. Thank goodness. I didn't touch the settings either. I'm happy it's at least at a decent frame right now. There's still some drops, but it isn't a hassle to play anymore. Although, oddly, the game likes to randomly crash when I start it up. It didn't do that before. Still, it tends to start with no problem the second try. While I'll never know myself, Windows 10 players should hope the upcoming update improves the game's ability to run, or at least not harm it. And yes, this has happened with games in the past. Terrible soundtrack. <laughs> yep. It's sad because they just release interviews with the composers and they actually kind of give a shit. Sorry folks, this is still boring, and the boss tracks are just recycled from previous games. Although, I'll say I'm impressed by how much audio content they managed to create for the radio nobody bothered listening to. Are you looking for the latest anime, manga, and toy kits from Japan? Head to Japop. This game's racist. Christmas theme. Still prevalent as ever. Too easy. No real challenge. Emphasis on real. The newer difficulty modes are so artificial and I wouldn't be surprised if they weren't even tested. I really don't think they designed it so the first psychopath, I mean maniac, you encounter can kill your high level Frank with a stun lock and jump attack. Then again, these are the new attacks. Either way, there's a difference between real challenge and this shit. Sorry, no remedy here. Laggy, unplayable multiplayer mode. I can't really speak for Windows 10 since the update is still absent and probably won't launch until long after I uninstalled, but the version it has right now is as lifeless as ever. So technically multiplayer is unplayable. I got no one to play with. There's actually a lot of PS4 players claiming they can't find matches or that it lags like crazy. It's very plausible for that specific version to have issues since it's a new game launch for that platform. No main campaign co-op. Yep, still absent. Can't pick up a lot of items. Still a problem. Hell, the new mode made it so you can't pick up items at all. Boring Zombini AI that you can barely interact with. Now, CV claims that the zombie AI has been improved for this new update, but I can't really see any difference. The bodies do react to you shooting them, sometimes. Looks like they took Crowcat's video to heart. Seriously though, you're gonna need more than that to make the zombies interesting. Glitchy character models. From what I can tell, their faces don't become randomly hideous anymore. No matter how quickly I try to load them in, they just maintain normal levels of hideousness. Very well. Horrible sleep-inducing story. Well, that doesn't change. Boring, cringy Frank West. <sighs> Wrong night to go commando, I tell ya. Good super weird zombie. Good, good, nice super weird zombie. Ugh, big time. You just love making me look like an asshole, don't you? Rotolo MIA. I mean, not like we expected them to completely replace Ty Olsen. Bad controls. CV claimed they refined the controls and made them more responsive, but it still feels exactly the same. I really can't stand how poorly Frank controls, and these new bosses can actually corner you very easily now when you fight them in confined areas. This is due to how poorly Frank turns the opposite direction, as well as how he bumps into fucking everything. It is more apparent than ever with these new bosses, as well as the higher difficulty modes. No mixing or unique food items. Yep, still absent. Ugly. Hard to change at this point. Developers still owe apology for constantly lying in interviews. Yeah, I know this one's petty. I don't fucking care. Let's take a look at our list now. Some issues remedied, as you can see, but overall, it's 
still a big mess. Ultimately, I appreciate this effort. It's valiant to say the least. Most companies would just sweep messes like this under the rug, but the few folks left at Capcom Vancouver took their brooms, grabbed some dustpans, a mop, maybe some fabuloso, and did their best at cleaning the damn thing up. So, A for effort, but even I understand that some things are just a lost cause. And that, everyone, closes the chapter for Dead Rising 4. I analyzed every single bit of this game that I possibly could and did my best to enjoy the entire experience that began the day it was revealed. With this last attempt to make it a redeemable game, I think Capcom will finally move on. Whether or not we'll witness new installments to Dead Rising is yet to be seen. If we can expect future projects, I'm almost positive they're going to reevaluate how this franchise should continue and make bigger changes internally. As much as I despise its existence, as appalled as I was by the blatant lies of Nichols and his merry men of beards and glasses, I still managed to get a lot out of this game. I had more fun analyzing every aspect of it in order to figure out what went wrong. I enjoyed venting about it and working hard to make these videos a reality. And of course, it was my first original video that blew up in popularity and helped me gain a following. I'm so glad to read how many people liked what I had to say over this past year. I'm also especially grateful for the bigger folks of YouTube that have also given their appreciation and assistance to help me these past couple of years, such as Fungo, Stipo, Tess Snakerer, and Chaseface. And of course, thank you for watching. I hope all of you had as much fun with this experience as I did. What are you doing here? What am I doing? Sit, sit, sit!